Hi, I'm Matt, and in this video tutorial, we're going to be looking at the GPI opens on the Onion Amiga. So, up on your screen right now, you'll see that what I've got here, and these are the things which you may or may not need if you want to follow along with this video tutorial, is that you'll see that I've got a couple of jumper leads, just mail to mail. You'll see that I've got three resistors, which are 330 ohms. You'll see that I've got a couple of LEDs and I've got our Onion Amiga board also set up as well. There's a couple of extra peripherals which we'll get to in a few moments, but during this tutorial, we will be looking at the general purpose input and output pins on our Onion Amigas and updating them remotely from our console for our Onion Amiga. Now this is really, really straightforward to do and there's nothing like starting from the basics and working our way upwards. So with that said, okay, let's start at the beginning. And the beginning is we need to see the screen. So what I'm going to do, I'll pop the screen up in front of you right now and you'll see the pinout diagram for our Onion Omega. So on our desktop, I am actually using the expansion board to make things a little bit easier for us. And on the expansion board, there's all the pins are dashed down just one row, which makes things a lot easier for us to just stuff those cables in. And we can see that there are a collection of pinouts available to us. So we have ground V out at 2.8 volts. There's a collection of green pins. So the green pins are the GPIOs. So those are the pins which we can use to interact with external devices, such as LEDs in this example. Maybe later on, and again, we'll cover this in a later tutorial, we'll look at using PIR sensors as well. We've also got a reset pin. We've got ground. We've got 3.3 volts. Now, I am just going to pause just to stress the point is that the Onion Omega runs on 3.3 volts. If you do not run your pins at 3.3 volts, you will end up cooking it. But there's a special note on that in a few moments. There's a couple of pins which get the USB details out. We've got serial for TX and RX. We've got another reset option. We've got two volts out. We've got four pins to do with Ethernet. Now do note that the Onion Amiga only runs up to 100 megabits per second Ethernet. And then we've got some additional pin outs. And then we've got two very special pins called SCL and SDA which allow I squared C communications. So you may have seen in a previous video tutorial where we hooked up, let me just grab that a moment. And in fact, let me just pop that on the webcam for you. We hooked up and connected our Onion Amiga to an LCD screen. We did that using the I2C communications and those were pins 20 and 21. You can of course connect many, many other devices to your Onion Omega using the SCL and SDA pins. So those two are very special ones and you don't ever want to use those for anything other than I2C communications. Now with that said, on our command line, we are able to turn these pins either to turn those pins into inputs, turn those pins into outputs, and we're also able to read those values. And of course, if you've got something like the servo or extension boards, you can also do pulse width modulation. But in this video tutorial, we're just going to keep it really basic. We're going to read values in and out. Now, I've already got our Onion Amiga connected via Wi-Fi, and I've already been connected via the console here. In fact, I've got the details from a previous tutorial up on the screen. Now, the Onion Amiga does come with a fast hyphen GPIO tool. Now, to use that is very simple. We just type in fast hyphen GPIO on the console, and then it tells us the usage. So we can see that we can set the input, we can set output, we can get the direction, we can read, we can also set the values. So we set the pin and then the value, whether it's a zero or one. So in other words, whether it's ground or 3.3 volts, or we could also set the pin to use pulse width modulation. So that would be fast hyphen GPO, PWM, then the pin number, then the frequency, and then the duty cycle percentage but we'll be looking at that in a later tutorial. But for now, let's start with the basics. What we're gonna go and do is turn an LED on. Now, I know you may be thinking that's not that exciting, but all projects start from humble beginnings. So let's cover the basics first. The first thing which we need to do is set our chosen pins as being inputs. 
So looking at the usage above, we would want to type in fast hyphen GPIO and then set hyphen output and then the pin numbers. Now to make this really easy, I'm gonna use the pins down the left hand side. So you may not be able to see this via the webcam, but down the left hand side, I'm gonna use pin zero, one, and six because they just, there's the first three pins on the left hand side. So pin zero, they're gonna to set to it as an output. Okay, and we get the confirmation there that GPIO zero is an output. We're also gonna do number one, and we're also gonna do number six. So those three pins have now been set to outputs. So now looking at the webcam, what we've got on here, I've been connected the ground rail. So from ground in the bottom left hand corner to the blue line here on the left. I've also been and got three 330 ohm resistors and then connected up with three LEDs. Now, LEDs, you can buy one million LEDs on eBay for $1 or approximately that value. But you can see, you can buy a very large amount of LEDs on eBay. You either get them the right way round or the wrong way round. Just a little tip for you, the way which I work with LEDs, which never does me wrong, it's very simple, on an LED, you have uh, one leg longer than the other one. And I always like to do best foot forwards. So the longer one is the big foot, so it's taken stride. So we'll put that forwards, so that's where we need to put positive. So always the longest one forwards, and that's where we put our positive connection there. And if you use that one, best foot forwards, you can never go wrong. And of course, if you buy a pack of LEDs like that, you've got one million LEDs to get through until you get it right. So anyway, let's go back onto the topic. We've got our ground connectors on our ground rail. We've got three 330 ohm resistors. We've got three LEDs of assorted colors. And the next thing we need to do is connect them up to our Onion Amiga. So this is very simple to do. So we'll choose the first one. I'm gonna plug that in there. And then we need to get that to go into pin zero. Now I do know on my webcam, you can't really see the zoom in there. It is really straightforward. You can just pop it in the right pins. It's very clearly labeled. In fact, I would say it's almost map proof when it comes to the Onion Amiga for the pin layouts on there. So you'll see that I've got those put in there and I'm just gonna lean forward to make sure I put that in the right one. There we go. And you'll now see that some of these are on and half on. Okay, and the reason for that is that it's an indetermined state of what these pins are. So let's go and set these values on our GPIO pins. Let's jump back to our console. Okay, so let's go and set these values. So we set them as outputs. Okay, now let's go and set the value. So we need the command fast hyphen GPIO set. And then we, now we need the pin number. So the first one was zero. And then we're gonna set the value to zero. If we set it to one, that turns the LED on. If we set it to zero, we turn it the wrong way around. And just like I said, it's very hard to make a mistake unless your name's Matt. And what I've actually been and done is put all those in connected to the wrong ones and set those, the first one, as the reset pin on there. So I'll leave this in there as an ongoing edit. So just make sure you get the pins in the right place. It's very easy to put them in the right places because they're all nicely labeled on the expansion dock. Unless you're like me trying to be impolite and not lean over on the webcam is the I'm using pin zero, one, and six. Now apologies if you can't, I'll tell you what, let me just move that up so you can see what I've been and done there. You'll see that I've got connected to pin zero, one, and six and not the reset option. So I'll leave that in there. So coming back, okay, so let's go and set a GPIO pin to, coming back to the desktop, we'll set that to one, that turns our orange LED on. Let's go and set that back to zero, and we can see our LED is off, and maybe we wanna do that for pin number one. We'll go and turn that on now. So pin one, on, well, it was already on, let's go and turn it off. There we go, we can see the LEDs coming on and off. And then the other one was pin six, which we were using. We can turn that on and we can also turn that off. Now let's go and turn pin six number on and look at the next feature which we've got available on the command line, which is to be able to read a value. Okay, so LEDs are great. So we can actually see that right now that pin is high but maybe we can't see that LED for whatever reason. We want to read the value and see what it is. This is where fast GPIO comes in again. Very simple to do. So we need to type in fast hyphen GPIO and then read and then the pin number. So if I read pin zero to begin with, 
ah, we can see its current state is zero or off. If we read pin one, that's also off. But if we read pin six, that's one, because we set that as one a few moments ago. So as you'll be able to pick up very quickly, it's very simple to turn our GPIO pins into inputs. It's very easy for us to change their values. Okay, as we saw, it was fast, hyphen GPIO, space set, then the pin number, so in our case, zero, one, or six, and then to change the value to on or off using zero or one, and then we can read the value of those pins. So I'm gonna stop it here because I'd like to continue this on and start doing some more cool stuff. You'll see that on my desk, I've got a PIR sensor, which we'll be looking at in a few moments. We've also got another little board, okay? Now, we won't be using this board in these tutorials, but I'd like to just make the point that I bricked this board, okay? So it's no longer usable, and it's so small I can't make a clock out of it or anything, but I will make a very good example of that board, and a mistake which I made in a few moments. And we are also gonna be looking at a four-channel logic converter and why this is important with the Onion Omega. So with that said, I sincerely hope that you've been and enjoyed this video tutorial. And from myself, Matt, I'll see you in the next one. So cheerios. Bye-bye.